Hey, what's going on? Today I just wanted to talk to you about the Hamo Can XL. Long story, really quick. Uh, my wife and I got our licenses towards the end of last year. She got her technician and I got my technician in general the same sitting, same test. It was just something we studied for a little bit. We kind of wanted to do it, whatever. We live rural. There's um, a repeater that way a little. It's mostly just used by the farmer that owns it. I, I've never heard anyone but him on it. There's another repeater about 8, 10 miles that way, something like that. And even with an HT, if I go outside and I kind of get the antenna up a little about head level, not a rubber duck, but like a collapsible antenna on it, then I can hit it all right. You know, I'm, I don't come in the best and I don't really like full quiet or anything. But they can hear me and they can understand me. So I can like participate in the nets and stuff. There's two nets a week I do. <clears throat> Sorry, my allergies are bad today. Um... I don't always want to go outside when I want to talk on the radio, right? <clears throat> and when we first got into the hobby, I didn't want to, you know, put up a mask and do all this and blah, 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 and run line in. So I looked for something more portable. Um, there is a company that does really nice radios with batteries in cases, ready to go. Just hook up an antenna. <clears throat> Again, I apologize about the, the voice. Really bad allergies. They, they, they make them called Shack in a Box. But the cheapest one is like a couple of thousand dollars if not a little bit more and i just wasn't feeling that you know <laughs> it was a lot of money to spend on a radio mind you some of that's also doing like hf i don't i think they might have one that just does uh two meter 70 centimeter but the rest are like you know have some variation of hf capabilities i just didn't really want that i have those privileges but it wasn't something I was looking to get into right away. So I looked for something cheaper that was, you know, a little more wattage so they could they could get me better if I just, you know, went out on the deck or whatever. So I got this thing called Hamocan XL from QSRadio.com. That's what I'm going to show you today. Normally when I first would use it, I would put some ladder line up on the deck in the window surrounded by aluminum so it wasn't the best. But... They can hear me, and with the 20 watts this thing does, I think it does 20, it might do 25. They, they can hear me a lot better than with the HD. Then I eventually got a J-pole and put it in a speaker stand, and I could walk that out to the end of the deck and then run the wire into the glass patio, and I could talk. But then you're out in the cold and the heat and whatever. So that's what I bought this thing for. And, you know, it's got like a $380 price point or something. But it comes in a nice little ammo can, so it's self-contained. It's got the radio wired in. It's got a battery wired in. It came with a microphone and everything. has the programming cable, which doesn't have the best software in the world, but, you know, it worked. And it's all right. And if I ever needed to, like, go in a hurry, I can just grab this ammo can, and I've got some battery power and a mobile radio, and I've got a little whip antenna in there, too. So no matter what, I have an antenna, or I could put it into the car's antenna or take an antenna with me. And yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and show you that. And then we'll go out to the car and use the car's antenna because the weather's not the greatest right now. And there's people cutting grass. And I'll see if we can't hear somebody. So yeah. So here's the Hamo Can XL. You know, it's just in an ammo can. Standard, you know, metal rattly ammo can. It's got your little, you know, opening here. So we'll just go ahead and we'll pop that open. Normally it wouldn't pop up, but like I said, I've got a bunch of stuff in here. So, you know, here's one of the smiling antennas that I have for my HTs. You know, it's got a coil in here and it, it's collapsible and stuff. These are great for the HT. I threw one in here. I thought I had a whip antenna in here, but I guess I took it out. I forgot I bought one of these just for this. And yeah, you could just plop that on right there if I wanted. And I could, you know, pull it up or whatever. Or you can hook it into anything else. So tucked in here. You know, I have my microphone, I have the charger controller, um, you know, it's got a DC cable if I want to plug it in it's right to the car cigarette lighter. I've got an adapter in here because I was using that ladder line which had SMA on it. And yeah, that's about it pretty much. Your just a little power supply, your little microphone. So, you know, we've got our power pole connectors, we've got some USB, we do have the voltage. Turn our radio off. So, you know, you got your little voltage readout there. We're at 12.6. You got some 12 volt out if you want it. 
no, whatever. The radio is wired into the battery. You do have fuses. You know, this is going to your antenna on the back of the radio. The uh, USB cable is right here. It's already plugged into the radio. I will say that mine shipped and it had uh, disconnected from the radio, which obviously when I was trying to get it to communicate, I couldn't and I was so frustrated, like an hour of trying. And then I'm like, well, maybe it wasn't plugged in. It wasn't plugged in, I'm an idiot. And then, you know, you've got your, your battery here. It's, it's lead, so it's not the greatest. And surprisingly, you can hear the audio pretty well as it comes up through the can. It kind of acts like a little speaker and kind of gets it coming back towards you. So yeah, let's go ahead and turn this back off. We'll go out to the car and we'll get it hooked up. So we're out here in the car now. I'm just gonna hook the mic up, screw it in a little. Show you the antenna real quick. So I've just got that little mount back there and we just got it running into the car here. Get that BNC on. Oh yeah, I turned the radio off, sorry. Normally I leave it on. All right. Oh, I must have the squelch up. Yeah, so let me get comfortable in the car so I'm not bending over and yeah. All right, so we're comfortable in the car. Sorry, the microphone's in my in my way. Um, yeah. So I'll slide the radio over here a little. Um, let me spin it around. I'm reading everything upside down. So right now I am on that frequency for the repeater. I said um, that I don't hit very well. Give me one second here. I'm gonna play with the squelch a little to make sure we're actually receiving anything. All right, so I'm gonna turn the volume up here because it's not the loudest thing in the world. KD9 TWC, this is an equipment test. KD9 TWC. Yep, so probably no one's on that repeater. We did hear the repeater come back. We'll go ahead and cycle through here. Uh, that one doesn't get anything. That one doesn't get anything. Let me switch hands here. Too far for that one. Well, sadly, I'm probably not going to be able to get anybody. Oh, that repeater hurt us. Let's try that. This is an equipment test, KD9 TWC. So we'll give that a second. Probably not gonna hear anybody. That's the problem with living out here. Um, I have been thinking about putting a mast up and being able to, you know, operate the radio inside. I did a mock with some PVC and I didn't do lightning rods or anything. And I put the J-pole up on some PVC is a temporary thing uh, the other day. Ran it into my office through a window pass-through. I just wasn't happy with the way it looked. I wasn't happy with where it was. I wasn't happy with how much ground wire I was going to have to like bury so I could actually cut the grass and stuff. So I'm torn on that. Um, with this antenna in my car, I can use my HT. I will show you my HT. So I like these Yezus, these FT60s. I have two of them. I originally bought them for me and my wife for when we were riding bikes or whatever. But just for riding bikes, I just picked us up two cheap, you know, Yezus or whatever. Because I figure if we're on the bike, we're going to drop it. I'm not going to drop a $170 radio. I'd rather drop a $30 radio. And the distance we're going to be to each other, we could even transmit on low power. We don't have to worry too bad about the spurious emissions. And, you know, we're going to be within shouting distance of each other anyway. So it's more of a just a convenience thing. Let's try another repeater here. Sorry, that one's, they're definitely not going to hear me. Not from right here. Um, yeah, well, this isn't the greatest review. I will say, though, that I am quite happy with it. It is expensive. It is a cheap radio. I will put the radio model and stuff down in the description. I think it's just a cheap Chinese radio. Not the greatest thing in the world, but, you know. Oh, that one hears me. 
This is an equipment test, KD9TWC. I don't know if they'll actually hear me, though. Yeah, I didn't even get a comeback on that. We can try simplex, I guess. I'm, I, I, I apologize. Like all of these guys do these 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 reviews of these things, and they're like they immediately get someone, and it's because they live somewhere where there's actually people. But if I look up people's licenses, there's not even anyone within several miles of me, except for the guy down the road that has that repeater. I guess we could try him, but he's kind of crabby. Let's uh, let's see. I don't even know if I have that repeater on here. Oh yeah, I do. There it is. KD9 TWC. Like, I'm pretty sure I found this on Google Maps, and it's like maybe four or five miles from the house. But like I said, I've only ever heard that guy on there, and yeah, not the best. Well, unfortunately, I'm just not going to get anyone to talk to. We're coming up on 11 minutes here. We're right at 11 minutes, so huh, I'm going to quit talking. But, yeah, that's been this uh, Hamo to go box, Hamo box, whatever it's called. Uh, it's a nice little radio. It's not worth the money, in my opinion, and it's got the lead batteries, which is not the greatest. I do have a um, much better Yezu mobile radio now that I've built into my own you know, Pelican knockoff case from Harbor Freight, and I've got a uh, lithium iron phosphate battery in another case to go with that, and then, you know, I got power poles hooked up and stuff, and if I ever want to go somewhere, you know, in a hurry, I could grab those two, but the nice thing about this is it's a metal case, you know, everything's mounted in there nicely. If you just want something like quick and easy and you don't want to do the work yourself, this is about your only option unless you just want to take an HD. That said, that might be worth the cost to you. It certainly was to me when I first got into this hobby. Um, you know, now I've got, I've got my own better stuff, but even like buying the crimpers for the power poles to make my own so I could use the power poles on the lithium iron phosphate battery that I bought. You know, that was like $75 cost by the time I bought some power poles and stuff. So if you don't want to get into it that much, yeah, this is totally something worth checking out. And, you know, I can charge USB stuff off here and it does have that 12 volt that I could pull some off of if I wanted to. Pretty cool. Nice little thing. Um, yeah, but thanks for coming by. Check out my Patreon. Thanks to James Greason, my current Patreon uh, sponsor. And I'll see you guys soon with something new or some food or I don't know. Who knows? Maybe some more batteries and some more radios. Thanks for coming by, guys.